What's up everybody, this is Coach Daniel, and in today's video we're going to examine the career of Rashad McCants, a player who by his physical attributes, stats, and basketball pedigree should have had a long-term NBA career. However, his legacy as a player exemplifies a man who, on paper, has it all, and whose psychological makeup exhibited many red flags which ultimately spelled doom for his career. He is a player who, like so many, don't realize the importance of the psychology needed for high-level competition in basketball. But he is a waste of talent who we can definitely learn from. McCants is a 6'4 shooting guard blessed with NBA athleticism and a 6'11 wingspan. He was known for his excellent scoring ability, and Kevin McHale even said that he had a high basketball IQ. Coming out of high school, he was a five-star recruit and the number one rated shooting guard of his class. He was a McDonald's All-American in 2002, and he played three years for North Carolina, where he led the ACC in scoring, averaging 20 points per game, and led his team to win a national championship in 2005. Again, on paper, this sounds like a lock for a long-term NBA career. So why was he only able to play four mediocre years in the NBA? It's clear that his mental makeup was the primary issue for this player with so much potential and talent. The first issue we're gonna address was that Rashad McCants was a bad teammate, pure and simple. You need look no further than when he was interviewed by a local television station and essentially equated playing for UNC to being in prison. Quote, as my uncle said, I'm in jail right now. You're not allowed to do certain things. You're not allowed to say certain things. But once you get out of jail, you're free. I'm in my sentence and I'm doing my time. And this shows a clear lack of judgment and awareness. And it also shows a lot of immaturity. It's just completely uncalled for. It makes them look spoiled and immature. In our program, The 14 Mindsets, we examine the importance of being a good teammate and how many players have extended their careers simply by being a good teammate. Further evidence suggesting he's a bad teammate was when he infamously accused North Carolina of having paper classes. This was an Outside the Lines interview in 2014, long after he suited up for his last NBA team. But he's essentially throwing his teammates, his coaches, his entire school under the bus. And this is basically for attention. He did a lot of things later in his, or after his career, just to generate attention for himself. I didn't write any papers. I didn't write any papers. But I know that the tutors did help guys write papers. But for some of the premier players, we didn't write our papers. I think him doing this is possibly because he never quite fit in with North Carolina. He's clearly not a good teammate. He probably harbored resentment towards the fact that he never fit in with his team never liked his coaches. The implications of what he's saying could also potentially ruin his legacy as a player at North Carolina. So it's just completely bizarre and detrimental. But you can see how these psychological patterns repeat, which is why it's so important for us to be aware of these red flags in ourselves, and if you're a coach, to be aware of these red flags in your players. What's interesting is that McCants seems to truly lack the metacognition to realize what he's doing and the repercussions for his actions, but more on that later. I remember reading this in an ESPN article, which I just uh, recently dug up for this video. McCants' former teammate Kevin Love was quoted as saying, in any line of work, you have to know how to talk to people and when to bite your tongue. Rashad has a me against the world attitude. You have to get past that if you want to help yourself. The fact that this was the impression that he gave his former teammates, it just, again, proves to show that he has a selfish nature and a lack of loyalty, and this seemed to haunt him throughout his career. The next red flag McCants possessed is bad body language. We've covered this so many times on this channel, and it's one of the nine red flags in our program, The Nine Habits. <laughs> Link in the description below. Essentially, there's no excuse for having bad body language. It's basically a big F you to your teammates. I'm focused on myself, I'm all about myself, and that's what you're essentially broadcasting to everybody. In the same ESPN article, McCant says, they say I don't smile. Does that make me a bad person? I'm out of the league because of facial expressions. For Rashad McCants, as in most cases, bad body language is an indicator of bigger issues, a symptom of a greater problem. It's clear McCants didn't see its importance in how it rubbed his teammates the wrong way. He's demonstrating selfishness and defiance in this behavior and the sort of refusal to change. These are the exact same attributes that made him a bad teammate. This also segues perfectly into the next issue for Rashad McCants, and I think this is the biggest one for him, and that's the fact that he has so many excuses. As we say in the 14 mindsets, excuses are toxic. They allow you to defend maladaptive behaviors and don't allow you to view yourself objectively, therefore stunting your development. Rashad McCant's career was riddled with excuses. And just examining the way he framed his statement, I'm out of the league because of facial expressions, puts the blame on everyone else and not himself. In doing this, he's unable to look within to fix his problems, something GMs and teammates would have clearly appreciated if he were to just try to make an effort to be better, to smile more, to have better body language. This probably would have helped him get more opportunities. He also infamously dated Khloe Kardashian. 
I didn't really want to cover this too much, but uh, I was watching his interview on the Colin Coward show and uh, basically had a whole bunch of excuses. He basically said that he would be worth 60 to $70 million if he hadn't had dated Khloe Kardashian. So here's the clip. We'll start with the Kardashians. You say you would be worth 60, 70 million dollars as an NBA player had you not dated Khloe Kardashian. Explain. Well, I never said that. Oh, all right. Well, tell me what you said. Without the situation in play, I'm worth 60, 70 easily. Two contracts, 35 million on the easy end with my stats. What was the situation in play? Define that. What does that mean? I think the well, she's a she's a she's a she's a high profile celebrity. Yep. And I was in a small market Minnesota team. So once I made OK Magazine, People Magazine, media takeout, I was getting unwarranted attention that conflicted with teammates, coaches, and GMs that were involved in my life at the time. So notice when he's asked to explain what he meant by being worth 60 or 70 million dollars, um, when he's asked to reframe that, he's basically saying the exact same thing. It's Chloe's fault that he's not in the NBA, not his. Just remember, excuses degrade you as a player. And you can see how this very habit really caused problems for Mr. McCants. It absolutely negatively affected things like his adaptability, judgment, and maturity, and ultimately ruined his promising career. Even his tattoo that reads, born to be hated, dying to be loved, seems to deflect responsibility and confirms a bias in him that he's being conspired against, and that it's everyone else's problem and not his. So I hope that McCants' story can be a lesson for all you young players coming up and all you coaches. I hope this illustrates the point that a player can have seemingly everything, but if they lack a strong mental game, they simply will not be successful at the next level. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. And if you want to learn more about the psychological components of basketball, please check out our free program called The Nine Habits. Again, the link is in the description below, and we'll see you guys on the next one.